What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Minnesota Vikings franchise series here on Madden 12. This week, the Minnesota Vikings are taking on the Carolina Panthers, Vikings 4-2. But their rookie sensation, Jamez Logan, has been injured in the last game and he will miss the next two games and then he'll come back after the bye week. And here you can see the stats, number one in the NFL in catches, number two in yards. Sure to be a premier receiver, hopefully he can come back from his injury and remain at a top level. But the Panthers without Jeff Ota and John Beeson, two major injuries on that team. Cam Newton's stats on the year, and they don't no longer have D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart. It's D'Angelo Williams and Dexter McCluster, and McCluster has a much better yards per carry right now. Kenny Stills is their number one receiver. Greg Olson, David Geddes, and looks like everybody else just pitching in what they can. Not much going from in the passing game outside of those three receivers. And then here's their defense. And quickly, I wanted the I get a lot of comments about the mispronunciation of Jamez Logan's name. And I've checked the Ole Miss football roster. He has a hyphenated first name. And then I also checked the Ole Miss 2011 football guide that has a pronunciation guide for weird names on their team. And it's J-A-M-E-Z-Z -Z was the pronunciation. So I believe I'm doing it right. Jamez Logan. Just to clear up any confusion, but here we are, Bank of America Stadium. It is raining this afternoon, and the Vikings are looking for a win to remain at top of the NFC North with their current 4-2 record. And of course, with no Jamez Logan, it means two guys have to primarily step it up. Michael Crabtree assumes a number one role, and Mark Harrison also gets a start outside. But here we go, Carolina Panthers on offense. Pitch out left for D'Angelo Williams. Nice juke. A spin move. Christian Jones will catch him from behind after a 19-yard gain in the first play from scrimmage. Then second and 12 out of the I formation, Newton. He hands back to D'Angelo Williams, but there is... Christian Jones been playing pretty good. I gave him a starting job, and well, he have four rookie starters right now if you count Logan, and they're all playing pretty well. Third and 11 now, and Eric Norwood, who's had a great season his first year as a starter, gets a sack on Cam, and the Vikings will take over now. Hand off Adrian Peterson. Nice block up the middle by Corliss, and Adrian Peterson. Man, what's it going to be like if this guy ever retires in this series? Man, Adrian, he is the man-child, and and is one of the most dominant players I've ever used in any Madden in history. But the Panthers take over now, down by seven, and sticking to the ground game is looking like the approach for both teams. D'Angelo Williams, he gets a nice chunk of yards on this carry, and now going forward to the next play, first and ten, Newton, he's going to give it to Dexter McCluster. He's got some space, and now McCluster looks to be gone for six. Both teams just have no desire to pass right now because the run defenses are pretty bad. And, well, the kickoff now going back for Lorenzo Booker, who's had a quiet season so far after a Pro Bowl season last year. And then he gets the ball ripped out, and the Panthers recover it inside the 20-yard line. And they have great field position. And Booker, his struggles continue. Maybe we have to make a free agent acquisition. Anyways, Cam Newton back to pass, but he wants to take off, and Minnesota can't get him until he gets the first down. So both teams still don't want to pass the ball. Second and goal for the Panthers from the three. Newton's going to take off again and get the touchdown. So we've yet to see a throw in this episode, but we go into Minnesota's next possession. We got a, a pitch set up for Adrian Peterson on second and inches. He breaks the tackle, jukes outside, and he's got some open space. First down and more to the 35-yard line of Carolina. But now faced with third and 16, Minnesota is forced to throw the ball underneath to Percy Harvin as he makes the catch. Picks up about 11 yards, and that will be good enough to put Ryan Longwell in a makeable distance range and the kick is up and it is just over the crossbar. Ryan Longwell is getting pretty old so gotta monitor him and see if he retires soon. Third and inches, Cam Newton and the Panthers have the ball later and Cam wants to scramble once again. He picks up the first down. We gotta stop the running attack from the Panthers. They don't want to throw the ball but here's Newton actually back to pass again. He wants to run again up past midfield and the Panthers have completely turned into a one-dimensional offense even though Cam has great throwing ability. D'Angelo Williams now on the run. He gets the first down. So I guess we got to stop the run if we're going to force him to pass. Second and three. Newton's going to take off once again. And he's going to slide as he gets inside the five-yard line to the two. Already 50 yards rushing for Cam. This is not helping our run defense stats. First and goal to the end zone. They catch us off guard and throw it. 
Dexter McCluster with his second touchdown of the day, and the Panthers now have a 21-10 lead late in the second half. Minnesota now looking to throw the ball and get back into this game, get some points before halftime. Mark Harrison makes a catch on third down to convert and get a first. Now handoff to Adrian Peterson, breaks a tackle, goes up the middle, and he will fall up past the first down marker. A new set of downs for Minnesota coming up. But they end up in third down and 10. Ponder looking to throw from the 37-yard line. And we go underneath again to Michael Crabtree. We're going to settle for a field goal yet again. Go to the second half now. Vikings have the ball 21-13. to Ponder looking to stretch the field a little bit. And he throws it to Michael Crabtree for a 16-yard completion. Only 80-something yards for Ponder up until this point. Both teams not really passing the ball much. But on third and nine, Harvin makes a conversion and a catch as he gets his third on the day. Ends up past midfield into Panthers their territory and then ponder he looks right for Michael Crabtree that's what I always throw to Jamez Logan so Crabtree's doing a good job of stepping up right now as the Vikings continue to work their way down the field but don't want to settle for a field goal deep pass Andrew Corliss makes the catch inside the five to the two 29 yard reception he's looking like a very good pickup for me he might actually get a contract uh stay on this team a little bit longer third and goal for ponder to the end zone and harrison drops the ball i give him all these opportunities to start and he drops the ball Derek mason thinks he could have caught that he probably could he's got a really big head though i don't even know if a helmet would fit on his head i know you guys have pointed that out before but later in the third quarter, Minnesota has the ball again, and they're continuing to air it out in the second half with a whole new approach to their offense. And now at the Carolina 48-yard line, nice pass by Ponder, throwing it to Michael Crabtree for the first down as Minnesota is now in field goal range. And we're getting to the fourth quarter, but handoff Adrian Peterson up the middle. He gets the first down and more up to the five-yard line. Peterson with almost 200 rushing yards right now. New set of downs for Christian Ponder to the end zone. Corliss, touchdown. And the Minnesota Vikings have taken the lead. Get off my tight end! Charlie Johnson, offensive linemen are not supposed to do that, but Corliss is okay. Gerhardt shows them some love, and the Vikings have taken the lead now, 23-21. to I probably should have gone for two and made it a field goal game, but I didn't. And the Panthers' running game has been silenced in the second half right now. D'Angelo Williams not going too far. So third and seven for Cam Newton. They don't want to pass it. They're a stubborn offense. McCluster tackled by Taylor Mays, who is always all over the field with his speed getting tackles. Minnesota taking the ball back over. Ponder to throw on first down. Hit as he throws. Throws to Michael Crabtree over the middle as we get to midfield. And Crabtree having his best game so far as a Viking. Hand off to Peterson on second and one. He'll cut left and get the first down. Now faced with second down and 10, the handoff to Peterson on the draw. He'll get another first down, and the Panthers having trouble stopping Adrian today. 210 yards. Third and six, though, for Ponder. He's got to throw it. Harvin, not a first down. So once again, a field goal attempt for the Vikings. It would be good. 26-21, the Panthers now taking over. Newton looking to pass, and he's going to throw it deep this time. Kenny Stills, two on one. He goes up and makes the catch. Come on, Keystone. The Panthers finally get a big play through the air on Stills' first catch of the game. Almost 60 yards. Newton's got an arm, but he just doesn't want to use it. And then on second and 10, this is not going to help us out at all. We do get a good stop on the running back, but a face mask penalty on Eric Norwood will give him an automatic first down. And now they're at the six yard line for second and goal. Newton back to pass. He looks to take off again, and we can't quite get him. Perfect dives and misses, and Newton into the end zone for another rushing touchdown. And they're going to go for two points and make it a field goal game, but that pass is tipped by Greenway great play and that means Minnesota now is within one point and needs a safety or a field goal to take the lead. Vikings on offense again but the pass to Harrison is going to be short of the first down marker probably shouldn't have made that throw and the Panthers are going to take over now with three minutes to go they want to run some clock but D'Angelo Williams runs right into Jared Allen and he tackles him for a one yard loss second down and 11 as the two minute warning approaches D'Angelo Williams he gets a better gain this time five yards bringing up third down and six a pivotal play for the Vikings defense handoff to McCluster and he is going to be tackled after a gain of two so Minnesota's defense holds and they will get the ball back for their offense with under a minute to go but all three timeouts ponder he looks to the right side and he fits into a small window for Michael Crabtree who makes the catch Vikings call a timeout now they have the 49 yard line second down and three ponder in the pocket he's looking to take off he has some green in front of him he's up past the 35 30 and he's tackled at the 27 yard line and now with under 20 seconds to go and still two timeouts Minnesota 
Wants to center the ball between the hash marks. Hand off Adrian. Cuts left. Great block by Crabtree. And Peterson. Touchdown, Minnesota. The Vikings retake their lead. They would make the two-point conversion go up by seven points. And the Panthers now are forced to throw the ball. Something they haven't done for most of this game. Newton heaving it deep as far as he can throw, which is a very long ways. Tipped and it's caught by Joseph. But time runs out. They can't get a timeout off. They had the ball at the 29 yard line, but that is the last play of the game. It's okay, Taylor, we win the game. And the Vikings move to 5-2 and two now. Started off 2-2, two and two, and now three straight victories have propelled them to have one of the best records in the league. Adrian Peterson, 250 yards, couple touchdowns. As Minnesota's victorious in Game 1 without Jamez Logan. Here are the stats. Newton attempted all of 10 passes, and he ran the ball 7 times. D'Angelo Williams, 20 carries himself, McCluster four, so they did well on the ground, but they were one-dimensional, and that led to their demise. They were pretty much silent in the second half. Crabtree stepped up 7 for 77. That's exactly what we needed to see. And Jamez Logan out for one more game, and then the bye week, and... Here you can see the records, Minnesota fourth in the NFL with their 5-2 record, no undefeateds remaining. And we'll take a quick look here at the divisions, Baltimore on top of the AFC North, the Texans and Colts are both 4-3 and three in the South, Patriots are 4-2 and two in the East, Kansas City leaves the AFC West with a 5-2 and two record, and of course Minnesota on top of the NFC North, 5-2, and two. Packers and Bears though they're not too far behind. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers on top of the NFC South, the Redskins and the Cowboys both 4-2 in the East, and the St. Louis Rams and Cardinals are battling at top of the NFC West. So now we're going to take a look at some of the NFL stat leaders, and Ponder is number one in yards. That really surprised me. But Jay Cutler is still the, continuing his great season, 17-1. and one. Those are MVP stats. Jason Campbell, though, 11 interceptions. Adrian Peterson over 1,000 yards already, leaving everybody in the dust right now. And 11 touchdowns. I didn't want Rashard Mendenhall to be running back of the year again. So that's what I'm trying to prevent. And Jamez Logan, he of course slips in his statistical standings a little bit. But hopefully when he comes back, he'll be back with a vengeance. And will reclaim his number one position in catches. And maybe even take over number one in yards. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves. And one thing I wanted to say to you guys is that I, I really thankful that you guys continue to support this series. It's a very long-running series, and I, I have a ball in making these episodes. I just want to let you guys know that I'm also getting Backbreaker in Blitz of League 2. I started the series on All Pro Football 2K8 just to get more football, not to detract from any Vikings franchise. I just want to have all sorts of football content because it's what I do and it's what I enjoy doing. But here are a couple more videos for you guys to check out in case you haven't seen them yet. On top is All Pro Football 2K8. I started the series on there a season with my Grand Rapids Goats team. Go check that video out. I enjoyed making that one. And on the bottom is my SSX Let's Play. This is part 5, doing some avalanche races in the Alaskan region of the game. I'm having a lot of fun with SSX, and I would appreciate if you guys checked that out and left some feedback on the series. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.